Today I'm going to give you a very basic introduction to how to use shaders in LibGDX. So to start off with, why don't I just show you what we're going to demonstrate today. So here we have a standard desktop app. We are showing an image of a tree and a lake. Our first shader basically turns the picture from color to black and white. Our second shader has a basic ripple effect. Uh, our next shader example has what's called a vignette effect where it basically blackens out uh, around the edges like this. And our last example has this um, wavy effect. So let's have a look at how we actually did this uh, by looking at the code. It's very simple. I'll go through it step by step. Okay, so we have a very simple standard desktop setup. So the desktop launcher, I haven't changed any code in here. This is the default. And then we have the um, standard class it sets up when you first set up a libgdx project, um, which normally shows the um, libgdx logo. Uh, so I've, I've got rid of that and uh, we can have a look at the code in here. So basically we have a batch and we load in um, our background image of the tree in the lake. And then this is where um, we load in the uh, shaders. Um, there are basically two files that we need to load in for a shader to work. First one is a vertex shader and the second is a fragment shader. And basically these are, you can load them as, as strings, I'm loading them in from a file. So we have a, up here in my assets, I have the vertex um, information. And then in this example code, we have the wavy effect that you saw. Um, I'll go into these a little bit more detail in a minute. So back to our code. Uh, so we basically load those into a shader, shader program and then we have to set this uh, pedantic flag to false. Basically, if you hover over here, you can see um, flag indicating where attributes and uniforms must be present at all times. We just want to set that to false so that our little shader scripts work okay. And then we've got a time variable in here, set it to zero. We'll see what we do with that in a minute. All right, and then the only other uh, code we need to actually get these effects running is in the render method. So we clear the screen as usual, black background. We update the time with the uh, delta time, and then we do a batch begin. Then we need to pass in some variables into our um, shader scripts. Um, so the next part of this code here is just passing those in. So for the um, ripple effect, I need to pass in the center of the screen. So this calculates the center of the screen. And then we need to pass in the time and we need to pass in our screen resolution. And then we do batch draw, batch end, and that's it. So what is actually happening here is the batch draws as normal, but we're passing in additional commands into the render process. So as the uh, behind the scenes, the image is being rendered, we're giving basically some additional instructions of what we want. Very simple. I'm not going to go into details on the shader scripts themselves. I'll just briefly show them to you. Um, this is a whole new area of um, knowledge for you if you're not aware of shaders, but this at least will show you the basics of how they work. So let's um, have a look at the, 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 the four scripts uh, or five scripts if I include the vertex one. So the vertex one, let's start with that. This is a very standard, basic vertex script. Uh, it does very little. Uh, this is the, the minimum you need um, and to get this working. Um, and then we have the four sh um, fragment scripts here. So black and white, ripple, vignette, and wavy. They're also known as pixel, um, pixel scripts because they basically manipulate the pixels on the screen. So the first one, black and white, um, I'll just show these to you. They're very basic. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details here because as I said, it's, um, uh, there's a lot to learn here. And this is not Java. Uh, 
GL SL has its own scripting language. Um, but you can see they're very short. So this basically converts uh, every pixel to black and white. The ripple one, we actually, this is where we have to pass in a couple of values that we saw in the Java um, here. So we pass in uh, center and U time. So let me just bring that script back up again. So we pass those in. So the center of the screen, what time we have, because it uses the time to basically work out where the ripple effect should be. And you can see it's a little bit more complicated, this uh, script. Then we have the big net one, which gave you the black border. Again, relatively simple. And then the wavy effect, which is basically uh, uh, using sine and cos to give that wavy effect uh, across the screen. So I'm gonna upload these, um, these scripts. You're free to use them yourself. Um, this is the best way to learn about shaders is to just play around with them, understand what, sh what are these are doing and doing some Google research to understand what uh, some of these, uh, these um, uh, variables actually mean. So I hope that helps you start on your journey to learning about shaders. Uh, I'm gonna do a, a second lesson which um, shows you a little bit more of what you can do with shaders. Um, so look out for that. I hope this has been useful to you. Um, let me know in the comments below and if you've got any questions, please ask them and I'll do my best to help you. Thank you.